Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is July 14th. Happy Sunday to everyone. Uh, wanted to do a quick update. It's been a few days since we've been online and there was a couple of things to talk about for sure. Barry is one of them. We'll get to that here in just a minute. But we are over at spaceweather.com taking a look at solar wind speeds sitting at 335, I'm sorry, 435.5 kilometers per second with a density of 2.8 that's right, our sun is blank again. And if you look over here to the right, there's a coronal hole that we are monitoring. We should see uh, the effects from this on the 15th or the 16th of July. Back to sunspots, we are at zero. That is now six days in a row. 124 days without sunspots here in 2019. By the way, that takes us um, to... 64% of the year so far here in 2019, and that number could grow. Uh, last year, we went 61% without sunspots. Uh, this year, it looks like we are possibly going to eclipse that. And I want to report, <clears throat> the TCI is now approaching record conditions. Right now, we're looking at a 2.82 on our TCI. Our record was in 2009 of a 2.05 so more proof that our upper atmosphere is cooling as I believe this is probably the lowest I think we reported on this index since we started watching this and, and same with uh, spaceweather.com for watching this 2.82 let's go to space weather section here on the grand solar minimum.com take a look at our information here first let's look at the kp indices first guys uh sitting at a one 24 hour max is a two uh, zero activity from the sun solar flares cmes nothing like that to worry about and there is the sto motion let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit we don't see any immediate problems right now that southern region coronal hole we should be getting the effects of that around july 15th it's this right here and then we're watching this as a possible active region, but actually as we watch it come around the eastern limb, it does fizzle out. So there was a period of time where this was being monitored, but as it is turning towards Earth, we are seeing uh, less to worry about with that particular region. So right now the sun is quiet, and let's take a look at the overall look here at the sun. It will continue to be blank at this point. for the next at least 15 to 20 days unless we unless we have some kind of sudden development of a sunspot region so but right now we are definitely within the solar minimum conditions and again i have to report this uh, as a little bit is extraordinary uh, we are not even really at the bottom of our minimum just yet and we're already reporting near uh, record temperatures in the tci the thermosphere climate index all right let's get started with some Grand Solar Minimum News, we start, of course, at the watchers.news. Powerful M73 earthquake hits Halamara, Indonesia. A very strong and shallow earthquake that was registered by the USGS as a 7.3 in Indonesia at 9.10 UTC time on July 14th. The agency is reporting the depth of about 6.2 miles. Epicenter was located about 94 miles south southeast of Sofifi, North Maluku, and 103 miles south southeast of North Maluku, Indonesia. Uh, majority of the people felt very light shaking. Uh, there were a few that had some strong, uh, strong to uh, very strong, about 56,000 people. So far, no damage or deaths have been reported. There are no tsunami warnings out at this time as well. We get a 7.3 out in Indonesia. And they are actually saying that there is a low, uh, low risk of likelihood to casualties or damage. Recent earthquakes in this area have caused secondary hazards such as tsunamis and landslides that might have contributed to losses. And at this time, we are not speaking of any. All right, strong and shallow 6.5 earthquake hits near the western coast of Australia. Strong earthquake registered by Geoscience Australia 6.5 hit near the west coast of western Australia on 539 UTC time 
on July 14th. So two big earthquakes, both of them pretty shallow, actually almost the exact same depth. Uh, one was a 7.3 in Indonesia, and then we have the 6.3 here in Western uh, Australia. No people living within this area of the earthquake, and 45,000 people have been estimated to feel moderate shake. About 100, about 1.5 million felt light shaking. There is no tsunami threat with this as well. Uh, the, the USGS issued a green alert for shaking related fatalities, which means very low, no, uh, no chance of that at this point based on the information that's being reported. So watching the seismic activity as of late, obviously we've been focused on California and there's still a lot of people holding their breath right now. Uh, everyone has followed that situation very closely. And as that happens, we are now starting to see Indonesia, which kind of has been stealing the headlines much of the year. It seems like we get a 6.5 or higher in the Indonesia region on a regular basis and uh, has kind of deceased for a little bit. But now we have more. And of course, this earthquake here in Western Australia and then uh, increased seismicity alerts raised for the Shishaldin volcano in Alaska. The Alaska Volcano Observatory is raising the aviation color to yellow and the alert level to advisory at the Shishaldin Volcano. The observatory said at 2109 UTC on July 12, 2019, the last eruption of this volcano took place in 2015, a very weak VEI-1. Uh, this change is based on increased seismic activity over the past few weeks accompanied by elevated surface temperatures at the summit. Now this is according to satellite data. These observations represent departure from normal background activity at this volcano, but do not necessarily indicate that an eruption will occur, according to the AVO. Shashaldin is monitored by local seismic and infrasound sensors, satellite data, and a web camera. Uh, so they have their eye on this. There's some more geological information here. Also, I think I didn't put it in, but I'll, I do believe there's another volcano that we are experiencing uh, activity from as well, not just this one here. Yeah, more intensive eruptive activity continues at Strombali. This is July 13th. So two big earthquakes to talk about. Uh, one Alaskan volcano that has raised the alert, and then the volcanic activity continues out here at Strombali. Two lava flows emitted from the same vents that have remained confined to the upper portion. Lava flows emitted from the central southern area of the crater terrace have covered the upper to middle slope of the Scaria. During the night, all active lava fronts have shed indigescent material which rolled down a, sleep, a steep slope. This means volcanic tremor amplitude has not shown any significant variations over the past 24 hours. There's some images from this explosion from this volcano. So the Alaskan didn't have this quite this activity, but still. So two stories to talk about. More volcanoes to be reported on. More earthquakes, stronger earthquakes, I should say, and also very shallow. Thanks to the watchers.net news for covering this information. You guys can check them out get all the stats and quickly just an update here 19.9 million people affected by the floods 34,000 homes have collapsed 1.7 well actually 4.34 million acres of crops have been damaged uh, 1.3 million people were located and over a half million people are in need of emergency aid the ministry has pledged to make every effort to meet basic living needs. Those stricken by floods intensify by intensify the patrol and maintenance of major dams and embankments to pour more rescue forces in heavily flooded areas and make contingency plans for serious disasters. Uh, we have reported on the crop loss. I believe uh, DAP 2030 said something around 27 to 31 percent crop loss in China right now. And they just continue to get um, pounded for um, flooding rains. Now, what I found, I, I thought about this for a minute, <clears throat> kind of prove how some of these um, 
projects were silly. Uh, China scientists actually were constructing a device that would pull more CO2 out of the atmosphere out there to help with climate change. And as you see, that machinery is not doing a thing. We preach that a lot here on the Grand Solar Minimum, that man does not affect climate. It can't start or stop climate change. Uh, Mother Nature is a force that cannot be stopped. And uh, we, we spoke with Dr. Circus today, a very nice gentleman. He is a doctor of natural, uh, he practices medicine basically, but on a natural level of, of healing. He doesn't use narcotics or any kind of uh, pharmaceuticals that most of us, unfortunately, have been uh, put on. I know a lot of you out there. But anyway, getting off topic, talking about how we have to continue to watch what is happening around us and identifying the red flags, uh, the constant suppression of this information about Grand Solar Minimum. Uh, he also faces a little ridicule because of what, how he practiced medicine. In other words, to have a doctor who knows how to heal or treat people medically without using pharmaceuticals is going to be very beneficial in a Grand Solar Minimum type situation. So we had a little conversation with him, and Mario is going to get that out to us at some point this week. But a good conversation, but it covers everything. And this, and this doctor, you know, he's been writing about cold climate change now since 2009 and has gotten into the grand solar minimum side of things as well. So if anything, this doctors like him are going to be a huge asset to what is approaching to us here in the future. And over 30 lives lost as floods and landslides hit Nepal and northern India. 14 in Uttar Pradesh districts were affected with at least 15 casualties. Landslides and floods caused major damage to the state and infrastructure, leading to the collapse of about 133 buildings. The affected districts, there are several of them here, uh, about 14 of them. At least six people were killed in Assam. 1,556 villages had to be evacuated, affecting a total of almost a million people, about 869,000. And this was as of Friday, July 12th. 17 people were killed in Nepal, with many people still missing. And that's according to RT. And just a common sight here, folks. Constant flooding. It doesn't matter if it's in the U.S. or anything. Worldwide, folks. Here's a look at the expected precipitation to fall in that region. Very heavy rain continue to fall the rest of the month, particularly over Nepal. Unreal. Approaching almost two feet of rain in some areas out here, folks. All right, don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back. Do you like this show? Give us a thumbs up. Want to support us more? Share to your favorite social media platform. Buy a t-shirt or become a Patreon. All links are in the description below.